Okay, thank you very much. So, uh, related siya sa mission ng Panginoon dahil makikita natin the life, works, and teachings of the Lord Jesus Christ in the Gospel. Yung pinag-aralan natin sa Luke. Ito actually makikita natin yung mission niya. The mission of the Lord Jesus Christ and how this mission is given to us. At uh, napakaganda dahil ang message ng ating sharing of the gospel is actually what is written in the gospels. Ang buhay ni Jesus sa gospels. So when we share the gospel, we share applications to the gospel, we go back to the story of Jesus. And we normally have to focus on one specific event in the life of Jesus Christ. Kaya maganda yung pag-aaral natin dito sa Luke. At uh, uh, nandito na tayo sa chapter 8 dahil every event, every story about Jesus, makikita natin na meron siyang evangelistic appeal. Meron siyang uh, ministry at saka missionary appeal. Meron siyang missionary impact na pwede nating kahit basahin na natin yung story and then we can make this an application as a call for faith sa tao na nakikinig na sila ay manampalatay sa Panginoon because of the story that we find in the Gospels. So sa story natin ngayon, we will focus on Luke chapter 8 at uh, we were looking at several miracles sa chapter 8. At kung makikita, sinabi ko na before na ang Luke chapter 8 there are actually uh, three miracle events pero yung last na miracle which we are going to tackle today actually is uh, intertwined between two miracles. So yung historia is about a miracle but within that miracle is another miracle. And we will discuss that but before that we start in prayer. Our Lord and gracious Father we pray and thank you for this time Lord that we could once again look upon your word. We pray for wisdom. And we pray for the power of the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts, our minds, to be able to really apply the knowledge and wisdom that you have given us so that we can share your word, we can share the gospel to others, and we can call people to faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. For we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So I would like to share my screen. Okay. So in Luke chapter 8, nandito tayo sa verse 40 hanggang verse 56. And ang nagkikita ko rito is the, the emphasis on faith. So habang nagkukwento tayo sa Luke, Uh, we always return to the call to faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Palaging andun yung pagtatawag sa mga tao na manampalataya sa Panginoon. And the most exemplary faith na nakita natin sa pag-aaral natin dito was the Roman centurion. Dahil yung Roman centurion, ang sabi niya, ang panampalataya sa Panginoon, just his mere word. He just speaks and it will happen. Sabi niya, I have the authority, I speak, I spoke, and everybody, all my soldiers will follow. So sabi niya, Lord, I believe you have that authority that once you speak, magsalita ka lang, it will happen. You don't have to do anything else. It will happen. So ito, ito yung pinakamataas na standard na magkikita natin in terms of faith. Kaya nga tayo ngayon, we look back sa panampalataya natin na sinabi nga ng Panginoon when he was referring to Thomas, nang inawakan ni Thomas si Jesus and said, and he said, my Lord and my God. Sabi niya, you, you saw, you touched, you believe. Sabi niya, blessed are those who did not touch, who did not see. But out of the spoken witness of those who say who saw and touch believe. So ganun yung blessing sa atin that we are actually have more faith than even the Apostle Thomas. Dahil nakita niya, niwala siya, 
tayo kahit hindi natin nakita but the mere words the mere sharing of the witness na nakita namin na experience namin si Jesus we believe ito ngayon yung titingnan natin sa ministry ni Jesus in Luke chapter 8 so we start the story with the Jerus so the story of the of Jerus runs like this in Luke chapter 8 verse 40 now when Jesus returned the crowd welcomed him for they were all waiting for him okay so naalala natin sa previous week ng uh, we were discussing about the 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 miracles na nag-cross sila pumunta sila sa Decapolis sa 10 cities ngayon after that pinalaya sila ng mga tao sabi ng mga tao we don't want you here and therefore they came back So bumalik sila ngayon sa the other side of the lake. And the remaining, nandito ulit sila sa Capernaum. Now when Jesus returned, the crowd welcomed him for they were all waiting for him. So talagang makikita mo, sabi ko nga, na talagang people are looking around for him, always waiting for him, always excited, always uh, listening for the news about Jesus. Where is he? Where is good? Where is he going? What time? When? Ito mga bagay yung uh, makikita natin, mapapansin natin. Sa ministry ni Jesus, everybody during the early ministry of Jesus was very excited. There is the uh, the Jesus Crusade. Sabi nga natin, the popular Jesus Crusade. Kaya if you saw yung The Chosen, kaya I disagree with that uh, uh, story na parang nag ano pa sila parang nang sa Campus Crusade for Christ ako okay so going sa the chosen parang nag ano sila ng mga teasers parang they have to advertise na Jesus is going to speak the sermon on the mount on a certain day on a certain time tapos naglagay sila ng kung ano-ano pa eh, this is not true hindi totoo yung storya na pinuput up nila why because Jesus is so popular is so popular that he has to hide he has to go to the wilderness dahil na everywhere he goes people will come and we will find here in this story so again uh, we have this story they were waiting for him and in verse 41 it says and there came a man named Jerus who was a ruler of the synagogue So this Jairus Bali is one of the religious leaders in Capernaum in one of the synagogues. And of course we know that uh, we studied and look at Luke and uh, we find that the religious leaders were apprehensive and a lot of them actually is negative to the ministry of Jesus. So madami sa kanila naniwala na parang mali itong ginagawa niya specifically because he is violating the Sabbath. He is violating their their traditions, the things that they believe. He doesn't wash his hands. He performs healings on the Sabbath and so many other things. He is surrounded by women in his ministry. So a lot of these things medyo negative sa kanila. And yet here comes Jairus, a, ru- a ruler who might have that idea, but then he he is so, de- ano, yung... He is so desperate. Wala na siyang magawa and he saw Jesus as the only means na maka-address sa kanyang problema. And what did he do? And falling at Jesus' feet, he implored him to come to his house for he had an only daughter about 12 years of age and she was dying. So ito pala, yung case in Jerus is she has a problem with her Uh, with his uh, daughter. So may sakit at dying na. Ibig sabihin, nasa emergency na. Kung sa panahon pa natin, nasa ICU na, ICU na, tapos medyo bumabagal ng bumabagal yung heartbeat niya. is dying. And he need immediate attention. That's why when when he heard that Jesus is coming back, he also waited there. And as soon as Jesus come 
from the boat. Pagbaba niya pa lang, he already approached Jesus and asked him, falling on his knees. Ay, hindi ba, ano yun? That, that's a big no-no para sa, ano, sa mga hudyo. Yung lumulod ka to somebody because that is a form of worship. And yet, yung paglapit niya, binigay niya na yung lahat niya na pakumbaba for to convince Jesus to help him. And also to show really that he also put his faith on Jesus. Yung pananampalataya niya kay Jesus regardless of what other people would say. Na oh, di ba religious leader yan? Bakit lumuluhod siya sa kay Jesus? And so, sinipwera niya lahat yun. Why? For the sake of his daughter. And ang emphasis dito in verse 42, his only daughter. So nag-iisa niyang anak na babae. Alam ko, tulad ni Pastor uh, Ayan, she, he was very excited nung nabuntis ulit. And then uh, si Annie Grace, and then yun nga, babae na. So ako ganun din. So si Dorn Dorn, anak niya lalaki, tapos nabuntis ulit, mga anak this month, and babae. And for me also na uh, I have my son, si Aslan Caspian, and then nung mga anak si Mama, si Ma'am A, ang anak namin is babae, si Alice. And I was also very, uh, sa akin kasi it was already complete. You have, a, you have a son, you have a daughter, and eventually may bonus kami, there was another son. So, but the thing is, yung excitement of having a daughter, kasi gusto mo makita yung ano eh, yung there is something different from a male and a female, from a son and a daughter. And you always wa want that complementary, yung nagko-complement sila. And so for this case, si, si Jairus probably he has some other sons, but the, the emphasis is that he has this daughter and he loves his daughter so much such that he will crawl to Jesus, he will fall at Jesus' feet. And the daughter was 12 years old. So magikita mo, you have already experienced as a father, I enjoy my daughter. Kasi iba yung daughter sa son. Malambing yung daughter, ma, ma, madabing pakulo eh. Yung uh, babae, yung mga lalaki usually, walang mga pakialam yan. So, uh, well, as far as my sons are concerned, sariling buhay yung ano niya. Pero yung mga batang babae, madaming kolor sa uh, buhay and uh, you really 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 enjoy the daughter and so I would uh, sympathize with Jairus and probably some of you uh, mad madami sa atin may mga anak na babae you really enjoy them kasi even my my wife na gusto niya yung babae dahil nabibihisan mo uh, damit damitan mo nag nagagawa mong dal so ginagawa nung Uh, daughter-in-law ko sa aking apo, sabi ko, kuminsan niya damit ang babae. Sabi ko, magantay ka na lang doon pag nanganak ka na, you have the girl. Kasi girl ka, you want the, a girl also para ma-experience ma niya yung experience me before. But uh, going back to the story, so talagang napaka lapit sa puso ni Jairus yung kanyang anak. And of course, nakita natin, and Jesus went. So as Jesus went, so ang ano natin, and Jesus went. So si Jesus, sumama sa kanya. Ang problema is that mabagal yung travel nila. Nagmamadali si Jairus, pero yung travel nila ay mabagal. Bakit? The people is pressing around Jesus. So imagine mo, kung gaano kapopular at kung gaano gustong marinig ng mga tao yung salita ng Panginoon at yung makita siya uh, face to face close and personal sabi nga nila the word in uh, Greek ang word na press ay the same word sa, in a, sa word na strangle they are trying to strangle him ibig sabihin talagang dikitan dikitan So makikita natin ito, uh, for example, si Manny Pacquiao, pag nanood kayo ng mga video niya, nagkakadikitan talaga. Yung halos uh, lahat na tao gustong ano, hawakan si Manny Pacquiao. 
or probably si Hidilin Diaz ngayon, yung kay Papanalo lang. Lahat gustong dumikit. Pati yung mga government official gusto idikit yung mukha nila kay Hidilin para sa auto ops at sa mga selfie. Eh. So ganyan yung ano. And uh, I think that is also the experience ni Jesus noon. Gusto lahat ma-associate sa ministry ni Jesus. And they're trying, they are actually squeezing him to the point na nagiging mabagal yung travel and si Jairus ay naglalong na ano nagiging apprehensive siya why because there is that urgency mamamatay the, the word here is and she was dying so yung anak niya na mamatay itong mga mukong na mga tao sa paligid ni Jesus ay eh, parang inano pinababagal pa siya supposedly di ba yung ambulance kapo nagde-drive ako ni ambulance sa dumaan lahat tumatabi pinauuna yung ambulance tapos malayo yung may usually hindi tulad sa Pilipinas na lahat ng mga sasakyan na sa likod ng ambulance kaya hindi mo amba, amba, alam kung totoo nga yung ambulansya dito hindi eh. they really distance from the ambulance so yun yung inexpect ni Jairus probably na uh, bigyan ng ano dahil ang pinagmamadali at baka hindi abutin pero ang ginagawa ng mga tao, wala silang pakialam, they just squeeze on Jesus. And so makikita natin si Jairus na yung, yung ano niya, yung, yung urgency sa puso niya na titest, yung patience niya na titest against all those people around Jesus. So ma, mapipicture out natin, naglalakad sila, supposedly nagmamadali, pero ang daming nag, ano, nagbabangga kay Jesus or nasa harap niya kaya hindi siya maka, maka move forward. Ganon din kay, ano, kay Manny Pacquiao, tumatakbo siya. Kung minsan mayroong mga tao na nasa harap, kaya he has his bodyguards tabi para hindi ma-obstruct yung uh, movement ni, ni Manny Pacquiao, especially when he when he has these practices na kailangan niya. So, ganun din yung kay Jairus. So, his, patient is, uh, his patience is being tested. And comes the in-between story. So, nakikita na natin, napipicture natin, na yung istorya na to very vital kay Jairus. Kasi bakit may biglang sumingit na istorya? Which Jairus never like, will never like. Hindi magugustuhan ni Jairus yung nangyayari. Because Jesus suddenly stopped. Tumigil si Jesus. Mamamatay na yung anak niya, tumigil pa dito si Jesus. Ano ba to? So just imagine, imagine yung ano, yung yung urgency, yung heart niya, yung 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 desire niya na magaling kaagad yung anak niya. And hindi niya naisip. Actually na pwede na maya sabihin lang ni Jesus eh ano kailangan sa kanya, kailangan andun si Jesus itatouch niya, gagalawin niya at mabubuhay or gagaling yung kanyang anak. So here is the story. Biglang may pumasok nga woman. And there was a woman who had a discharge of blood. Now, for 12 years and though she had spent all her living on physician, she could not be healed by anyone. So Maganda, binigyan ka agad tayo no, itong babae and then we have the background. So we don't know. Eh, I'm sure hindi yun uh, ano, hindi na kuwasa. <laughs> Sabi nga palagi sa Joe Chosen kasi parang nagno-note si Matthew eh, or si John. Nagte-take na ng notes. Ay, hindi mo makukuha sa notes to na pag may nangyari doon para kang ABS-CBN na oh, sino ka? Ano pangalan mo? Anong problema mo? Anong diagnosis sa'yo? Anong prognosis sa'yo? Anong ginawa ni Jesus sa'yo? <laughs> Hindi naman ganun. It's a, <coughs> uh, how we understand the gospel or the story of Jesus was written is that it was written by the tradition. Stories that has been passed on and on and on and on and eventually they were written. It was not that they were like sa time natin na may note palagi na kung ano ginagawa ni Jesus, yung nagsusulat sila, oh, naglalakad na kami and Jesus is walking now. Oh, namit niya yung woman. Uh, sulat mo, hindi. Hindi ganon. There, there is no such thing as that. Okay. So, ito nga yung babae. Ang istorya is that uh, meron siyang 
ano, yung uh, menstruation. And yung menstruation niya, hindi tumitigil for 12 years. Ang problema sa menstruation is that the, the Old Testament uh, laws, pagka menstruation ka, you are treated as unclean. Unclean. Even your husband cannot touch you because you are unclean. And if he touches you, he, she, he also becomes unclean. So the principle here is that this woman who was a, a yung uh, ano niya for 12 years hindi tumitigil ang kwento ko na sa inyo i have 16 uh, uh, my my mother had uh, 16 children ang reason kaya ayaw kaya siya nagkaka gusto niya magkaanak kaagad because he doesn't want the feeling of having this monthly period imagine mo during their time 1930s yun yung nasa utak niya. Kasi when he started experiencing that, kapapangasawa niya, nangasawa din siya. So they were married 13, uh, 14, 15 years old yung nanay ko. And then buntis na at nakapanganak na between 15 to 16 years old. So ibig sabihin, yung experience having this uh, menstruation, ayaw niya. Kaya ano ginagawa niya? Sabi niya, pag nabuntis siya, pag nanganak siya, gusto niya, buntis na naman ulit siya para wala siyang menstruation. So, na, 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 naintindihan natin kung gaano ka messy, especially during the time, back in the 1930s, or probably on the first century AD, kung gaano kahirap yung gano'n na walang tigil yung menstruation. And this is the problem of the woman. That's why it was so serious dahil hindi siya makapasok sa temple, hindi siya makapasok sa sinagog, hindi siya makamahawakan ng iba uh, because of ritual impurity. Dahil she is considered impure. At alam natin yung principle sa Bible and we also understand the principle of science. Okay? From generation to degeneration. So from white to black. Yung nangyayari, pag uh, hindi ka malinis, hawakan mo yung malinis, yung malinis magiging hindi malinis. And that is the problem with COVID-19 ngayon. Di ba yung COVID, hindi naman pwede yung hawakan mo yung may COVID, mawawala yung COVID sa kanya. Ay di, lahat tayo masaya. Hindi. Pag nawakan mo yung may COVID, may COVID ka rin. Pag ginatsingan ka na may COVID, Pag nag-usap kayo na may COVID, doon pa lang sa ano niya, water vapor o kung ano man malabas ang bunganga niya, sa hininga niya, pag pumunta sa atin, magkakaroon tayo nito. So that, that is basic principle in all things. That's why it's quite unique for the Lord Jesus Christ. Palagi natin natuturo dito sa Sunday School na baliktad. From the unclean, Jesus who is clean touches the unclean, those unclean becomes clean. Ganon ka, ganda ng message, the ministry ni Jesus. He is a pure, he is pure uh, as fire and then everything he touches becomes pure. So ganon yung uh, basis natin when we look at this story. Okay. So naubos yung ari-arian niya, wala na siyang pera. I don't know, baka binenta niya yung mga kung ano man yung negosyo niya, bahay niya, I don't know. But it tells us that uh, she can no longer afford to be healed by physicians or anyone. And they did all kinds. Wala, hindi siya gumagaling. And here comes the Lord Jesus Christ. And they put this mind, sa mind niya, Sabi niya, this is the only chance I have. I trust and I put my faith on this man, on this person. They call the teacher. They call the rabbi. They call the Christ. Sabi niya, if I can touch him, if I can only touch him, that's my faith. Hindi niya kailangan magsabi or kung ano man tutingnan ako o uh, gagalawin ako. Hindi, ako. By faith. Pag tinatch ko siya, I will be clean. So, makikita na kaagad natin yung kaibahan ni Jairus at saka ano babae. Si Jairus, kailangan dadalin niya dun at uh, itatouch. Itong babae, sabi niya, 
tatouch ko lang to. Nothing more, ayos na. So, make malapit because there is the principle of touching but also the principle na siya yung gagawa ng touching and he believes that a miracle will occur. Okay, so lumapit siya sa likod and touch the fringes or the fringe. So this word touch, actually alam nyo na, touch me not, no le metangere. So dito ginawa ni Jesus, na, na ni Jose Rizal yung title niya sa no le metangere from uh, the book of John. And in that book of John, it was actually Mary Magdalene who was touching Jesus. But the word sa John, do not touch me, ang uh, word niya, but it also translated do not cling upon me. Do not cling. So yung touch, hindi lamang touching, kundi talagang clinging. So ma mararamdaman mo na ginagalaw ka. In similar manner doon sa kay Mary Magdalene. So this is what happened. Tinatch, pero actually the idea is he clinged upon him. And then yung tassel, yung kinukwento ko palagi that the clothes, according to the uh, Leviticus, you wear the clothes, you have tassels. Uh, may ano yan, may mga talitali na kumisan doon nilalagay yung mga Bible verses sa garment ng mga lalaki, especially about the rabbis, yung mga teachers. So, ginalaw yun, inawakan, and immediately her discharge of blood ceased. So, tumigil ka agad, naramdaman ka agad ng babae na nawala yung sakit niya. Yung continuous bleeding niya nawala. And Jesus. So, dito, makikita natin, uh, while the story does not tell us na tumigil, pero definitely makita natin na tumigil siya. And Jesus said, who was it that touched me? When all denied it, Peter said, Lord, Master, the crowds around you and are pressing in on you. Sabi nga natin kanina, pressing, squeezing, uh, struggling. But Jesus said, someone touch me for I perceive that power has gone out of me. And when the woman saw that he, she was not hidden, so ang akala niya, tatouch niya, hindi niya na, no, hindi niya na kailangan iboburden pa si Jesus kasi nagmamadali nga. Sabi niya, touch ko lang to, okay na. Pero hindi pala pwedeng ganon. Sabi ni Jesus, who touch me? So sabi niya, ako hindi siya pwedeng magtago. And so, uh, she she said she was not hidden. She cannot be hidden. Jesus knows what she did. She came trembling and falling down before him, declared in the presence of all the people why she has touched him and how she had been immediately healed. And he said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. So, akala niya, pagagalitan siya ng Panginoon, instead of that, Jesus wondered about his faith, uh, about her faith. So talagang natuwa si Jesus sa kanyang pananampalataya. Nang pananampalataya niya is a matter of touching the tassel. Yung pinakadulo ng hindi pa yung katawan kung di yung damit na ni she will be healed. Ganun kalakas yung pananampalataya niya. And because of that, Jesus told her, your faith made you well. Go in peace. So, as a lesson dito, magkikita natin the strong faith of the woman. Talagang yung, yung word na ginamit dito, she came up from behind and touched the fringe. Why? Bakit niya ginalaw? Because in uh, the book of Matthew, ang word dito dinagdaga ni Matthew Matthew, in the mind of the woman, sabi ni Matthew, if I only touch him or his tassel or his clothes or the tip of his clothes, I will be healed. Yun yung pananpalataya ng babae. And he did that. And after the touching, he became immediately clean or healed. So, grabe. Grabe yung pananampalataya. Those are the kinds of 
uh, stories in the ministry of Jesus na the, mi- the miracle and the work of Jesus is entangled by the faith of those people around him. Kaya makikita natin, even if he preaches the word, if he says beautiful words that that heals the heart, pero other people will hear it with a heart of stone. Wala, hindi sila, ano, hindi nila nararamdaman yung life doon sa salita ng Panginoon. Why? Because of faith. They don't have faith. And there are people who have faith. So ang ang ministry ni Jesus, bale, nag-iiba, depende kung ikaw ay may pananampalataya o wala. Para sa may pananampalataya, they get the benefit. Sa walang pananampalataya, pananampalataya walang nangyayari. In fact, nagiging negative yung impact ng ministry ni Jesus. We saw that already sa story natin last, last Sunday, na yung, yung demon possess na nampalataya sa Panginoon sa ginawa sa kanya, but for those other people, yung mga miari ng pigs, nakita nila yung power ni Jesus, natakot sila, they are more interested with their financial loss or the financial gain that they said to Jesus, leave us alone. Leave us. Yun yung message nila. Ayaw nila kay Jesus. They rejected Jesus. So here comes the story of the faith of the woman who embraced Jesus as uh, somebody that is trustworthy and faithful. Now, mga tanong natin, madalas ito yung mga tanong, why did Jesus ask to touch him? Uh, hindi ba alam ni Jesus kung sino yung gumalaw sa kanya? Ano ba si Jesus? Kulang ng, ano, kulang ng wisdom or kulang ng power para malaman. Of course, we understand that in all these stories about his question, yung nagtatanong siya, it's not about whether he knows it or not. He knows it. But it's only he wants the response coming out from the people he asks. That's why when he asked uh, his disciples, who do people think that I am? It's not that he doesn't know. He knows it. But he wants to extract the words from the disciples themselves. That's why he wants the disciples to confess. And therefore, the, uh, uh, Peter said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. So that is a confession. This is what I believe. They may say that, but this is what I believe. And the other disciples would concur, would agree that they also believe the same. So yun yung makikita natin. Sa mga tanong, it, it, it actually extracts answers or responses. And so here is the woman. Nung tinanong, the woman has to confess. So yung tanong bali, it's not because uh, Jesus is ignorant, but he draws the woman out na nagtatago to confess his faith on the Lord Jesus Christ. Yun. Kaya madalas, when we look at the scripture, kailangan makita natin, is Jesus asking us? Tinanatanong ba tayo dito sa mga teksto na binabasa natin? Na-apply ba natin sa sarili natin? May tanong ba si Jesus na tinatarget sa atin? At yung tanong na yun, dapat ba may response tayo? That's why when we hear uh, Pastor Ayan nung nagpipreach siya about witnessing, about the ministry, and he always asks those rhetorical questions. Hindi mo kailangan sagutin, pero alam mo na it has to be addressed in your heart. Na ang tanong niya, kuminsan very sarcastic, because the question is that we are not doing what we're supposed to do. In a similar manner, ito dito magkita natin, Jesus draws out the confession from the woman that he put his trust in Jesus, that he believes in Jesus, and he was healed because of that belief. And what it was reinforced when Jesus Christ said to him, to her daughter, your faith has made you well, go in peace. So napakaganda nung application, yung in-between story. 
the the sad story is that <laughs> yung sad story nito sabi nga natin uh, Jerus uh, patience is, is running out kasi mamamatay na yung anak niya bakit sumingit na naman ito and the worst uh, the worst report came in pumasok na nga. kasi and while he was speaking someone from the ruler's house came and said your daughter is dead do not trouble anymore the teacher so yung kinatatakot niya na he was uh, so anxious na dum ma, pwede niya hilahin niya na umikotse pa noon pinasakay niya na sa kotse niya dinala sa bahay nangyari nga hindi umabot si Jesus na matay na yung anak niya So makikita natin dito yung storya na hindi lamang ito uh, just a mere story about uh, uh, nagkaroon ng uh, parang napatigil yung travel kundi dahil sa pagtigil ng travel tuloy ang consequence na matay yung anak ni Jerus. Anong gagawin ni Jerus ngayon? Ang gagawin niya, sabi niya, Lord, eh naniwala ko sa iyo pero Niwala ko na papagaling mo yung anak ko pero kung patay na siya, wala na magawa. In similar manner, we find that in the story of John chapter 11, the story of Mary and Martha, in the story of Lazarus. Nung dumating si Jesus, patay na si Lazarus for three days. Ka fourth day na, so sabi niya, Lord, wala ka na magawa, patay na eh. But, iba dito si Jerus. Why? Because, Nung makita niya yung experience, yung miracle ng faith ng woman na reinforce, lumakas yung loob niya. Lumaak, lumakas actually yung loob niya and eventually said, oh, I don't care if my daughter is dead. For as long as Jesus would say he will be alive again, I believe so. Kaya makikita natin, Patuloy pa rin sila. They continued. Hindi, hindi pinakinggan ni Jerus yung kanyang uh, patulong or kam uh, kamag-anak doon. Sabi niya, let's go ahead and we have the story. And when he came to the house, he allow allowed no one to enter with him except Peter, John, James, and the father and mother, mother of the child. And all. Okay? So bali pumasok na sila and all were weeping and mourning for her. But he said, do not weep for she is not dead but sleeping and they laugh imagine mo ito usually para makita natin para mga bayaran eh bayaran oh iba sa china ganyan eh mga the, the weeping ano yung mga weeping professionals ni movie yan eh hindi ko matandaan sino yung mga artista pero yung trabaho nila napunta sila sa ano sa mga chinese na namamatayan tapos sila yung iyak at iyak doon at uh, si ano si uh, kailangan para mapapakita na maraming nagmamahal doon sa namatayan. So ito para mga professional kasi nung marinig nila ang sinabi ni Jesus, do not weep for she is not dead but sleeping. Aba natawa sila. Kasi they are sure that he that the, that the daughter is dead. And hindi naman sila tangaw, hindi naman sila sabi nga born yesterday. Alam nila yung hindi gumagalaw, walang gininga, hindi umakyat yung tiyan or uh, worse siguro kung ano man yung kanyang sakit, it came to the gravest point, alam nila patay na. So they know she is dead. But Jesus said no, she's sleeping. At tatawa sila. Ano tong, uh, anong ano to? Anong klaseng Uh, tao to, hindi niya pa nakikita, sabi niya tulog lang. Because they have not experienced the miracle of Jesus. So yun yung problema ng mga tao. E, yun yung kailangan ipagbabalita natin. I-witness natin. Na nag-witness tayo of our experience. And the experience that we saw from others, how the miracle of Jesus, putting your faith in Jesus, changes your life. So si Jerus, hindi, tuloy pa rin. Tatawanan sila, Jero sabi niya, pabayaan mo sila, go away, Lord, tuloy mo, pagalingin mo yung anak ko. And, ano dito, but taking her by the hand, 
he called saying, child arise, uh, arise, tabita komi, child arise. And her spirit returned and she got up once and he directed that something should be given to her to eat and her parents were amazed, but he charged them to tell no one what had happened. So it's a story about faith, uh, the, the faith of the father. Na dahil sa mga consequence or sa mga pangyayari, he continued and insisted that Jesus will still be able to bring his, her, his daughter from the dead that Jesus could raise him from the dead. So, ang story, kailangan establish natin, ito patay. Hindi ito na ni-resuscitate lang. Talagang patay. And the fact is, her spirit already left him. And we go to the lessons, bale. So again, sabi ko nga, because of what happened to the woman, Jesus, uh, Jairus' faith was reinforced. No makita niya yung pangyayari na nampalataya si lalong na nampalataya si Jerus sa kay Jesus. Kaya kahit sabihin man nila na matay, he still believed Jesus is able to raise the daughter his daughter from death because of his experience. The second one is yung faith Nung mga mourners, because they have not experienced Jesus' work, teachings, life. Hindi nila na-experience. Sina na kwento. Anong gagawin? Nagtatawanan. Dito sa Thailand, pag Christian ka, and then you have the Buddhists, they never heard about Jesus. That's why when you share about Jesus, Jesus raising again from the dead, ma, 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 mapapangiti sila some of them may also laugh pagtatawanan tayo sa ating pananampalataya so bakit? sabihin nila nanuloko ka ba? it doesn't happen it did not happen wala pa akong nakitang patay na nabuhay and then you tell me this story this is also just sabi nga quote in quote story kwento lang to this is a fable sabi ni Pastor Kangina, in ano lang, legend, gawagawang istorya lang yan, hindi yan totoo. That could happen actually dito sa Thailand, especially sa mga Buddhist. Because they never heard about Jesus. And they are like these mourners. They would laugh. Why? Because they have never heard about Jesus. So nakikita natin yung ibang klaseng mga faith. The faith of the woman the faith of Jerus and the faith or the lack of faith of the mourners. So, ito yung target natin. Yung mga mourners na to, yung mga walang experience kay Jesus, ito yung dapat sinishare natin yung salita ng Panginoon. Kasi, bakit? Because of Jerus. Si Jerus, kulang yung ano, pagkita kasi natin, medyo kulang eh. Kasi if he was, if he has the strength yung strength ng Roman so ng Roman centurion ay hindi niya napapupuntahin si Jesus doon sa bahay niya anong sasabihin niya Lord sabihin mo lang nagagaling yung anak ko hindi mo na kailangang pumunta sa bahay magaling na kagad yun hindi na ginawa yun bakit hindi niya hindi pa niya naabot yung ganung kataas na pananampalataya ng faith kaya nga sabi ni Jesus doon sa Roman centurion, sabi, I have never saw such a faith as this in all of Israel. And we are talking about Jerus, the religious leader. Tama nga, walang makakapantay doon sa pananampalataya ng Roman centurion who is a Gentile. And so here comes the uh, story. So again, Makikita natin yung tawag na death, yung kamatayan. So kamatayan is separation of the spirit from the body. Kaya madalas, matutakinggan nyo ako, and the, uh, I always stress it that I believe in the dichotomy of the composition of the, the human uh, of uh, man uh, because of eschatology. The principle of eschatology is that the body goes back to the dust and the spirit goes back to the Lord. So there is the 
eschatology, the, 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 the two compositions goes to specific places. But then the scripture would say that they will come back again, that body and spirit will return to each other and form to be what we call the regenerated body or the glorious body or the resurrected body. The mingling of the soul or the body and spirit. So ito yung magikita natin dito when we say, when Jesus said, "Child, arise!" His spirit returned, got up at once sa katawan niya, and he was able to eat again. So the beauty of the story that we see here is the strength of the faith, the different characteristics of the faith. And as we go on to the story of Luke, yun yung magikita natin, especially when we talk about miracles. The story of the faith of the beneficiaries, and sometimes the lack of uh, the lack of faith, and even the absence of faith. God still performs miracles in spite of the absence of faith. So ito yung mga ano, ito yung mga color na makikita natin sa story ni Luke. Again, we saw the story, ang ending niya, Jesus Christ told them not to tell anyone about what is happening. But we saw in Matthew chapter 9, sa story ano to, the same story that what happened dun sa bahay ni Jerus actually was reported all over the city or all over the village or area. So actually kumakalat. Now ang tanong natin bakit hindi ayaw ni Jesus na ipamamalita. And actually pag nanood kayo ng The Chosen, yun din ang makikita mo na there was a point in time when Jesus said that okay, huwag mo pamamayo pamamalita but eventually merong point na sabi niya okay pwede nyo nang ipamamalita. And actually, what we find in uh, Matthew is that in Matthew chapter 8, 28, sabi niya, that there is now the resurrected Jesus and this is the proper time for you to witness what happened here in uh, Israel, in Judea and Samaria and in Galilee. So this is the point. Sabi niya, I have all the authority. Now go therefore, make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them, teaching them, let them observe all that I have commanded you because I will be with you always. So ang inantay lang is that with the, with the, with the death of Jesus Christ and his resurrection, ang, ang ano niya bali was, he's now in heaven and then he's, Uh, spirit is now all over the place. There is now empowerment sa witness natin. Before, wala pa yung Holy Spirit. Okay, there is the lack of uh, power, but there is now power. And look, of course, when he went, go straight to the book of Acts. Ang sabi nga ni Pastor Kangina, Acts chapter 1 verse 8, which is also uh, a book written by Luke. But you will receive power. So yun pala yung naantay ni Jesus. The power of the Holy Spirit will come upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the end of the earth. Alam natin yung power na yun. We will find that in Acts chapter 2. At the Pentecost, when the uh, power of the Holy Spirit will fill in and will fill the, the disciples and the early Christians. So that's why when we see that, okay, don't talk about this first because there is a timetable that Jesus Christ is following. And this is the time when we have to talk about the power or the work in the life of Jesus Christ. Questions? Any questions, comment, clarifications?
Welcome, uh, Miss Alice. Mama, may Ma'am A, comment ka? Pastor? May question kayo guys about sa lesson. You can uh, ask or uh, maybe some uh, additional thoughts. Pwede rin siguro. Okay naman sa akin kuya, wala akong question. Um, ako, Chebel. Isa lang. Isa lang. Uh, yung sinasabi bang parumihan dun sa menstruation ng babae, anong klaseng, anong klaseng mai, ah, uh, dito, anong klaseng karumihan ang uh, tinutukoy? Karumihan sa, yun lang, yun lang, anong klaseng karumihan? Yeah, so sa Leviticus, in the Torah, bali sa Old Testament, uh, may meron silang uh, principle of uh, uh, ceremonial uh, cleansing and also being ceremonially unclean. So ibig sabihin, there are occasions where you become ceremonially unclean. Ang classic na palagi makikita natin sa uh, in the Gospels, you become unceremonially unclean when you go inside the house of a Gentile. Number one, yon. Number two, when you go to the land of Samaria, you actually become ceremonially unclean. Number three is if you touch uh, dead animals or anything that is dead. So you also become uh, ceremonially unclean. So you are uh, not allowed to actually go to the temple when you are ceremonially unclean. Now, ang ibig sabihin nito is that you are not sinning. You are not sinful. It's only that uh, there is the principle of holiness. Okay? Na kailangan uh, everybody should be clean when they go to the house of the Lord or uh, meeting the Lord. So yun yung ano, that, that is the rule with regards to the book of Leviticus. So hindi ibig sabihin nun, uh, because uh, meron kang, uh, for example, menstruation, tapos uh, uh, you are disallowed, for example, for certain things, eh makasalanan ka na, no. Uh, it's only a principle in scripture. Now, uh, Bakit sasabi, tatanong mo, bakit ganon? So, there are two things about uh, being ceremonially unclean. May dalawa akong maisip at, at this time. Mag, ano kayo, you do your research. Number one, anything about death. Anything about death. So, bali, ang principle is God is the provider of life. Okay? So, ang nangyayari na yung ano, anything that uh, related to death, ayaw ng Panginoon nun. So dapat lalayuan natin yon. So when we approach God, we should be always uh, looking at the uh, life giver. Okay? Number one yon. Number two, which is quite controversial even sa Jewish tsaka sa mga Christian literature, is that yung menstruation. Yung menstruation kasi uh, actually is the Parang ano siya, yung sinasabi nila, eh, the woman gives birth to, uh, to, uh, to the children. So sila yung parang meron noon. Uh, but because they are uh, producing sinful children, so parang sila yung naging means para magdala ng kasalanan dito sa mundo. Kaya sila nagiging ceremonially unclean. That's why yung sinasabi ko very controversial siya na, na topic. Pero some of the uh, theologians and scholars would uh, explain, the, uh, explain it uh, that way. So in association sa uh, 
uh, tawag niyan, yung uh, uh, menstruation. Thank you po, thank you po. I suggest mag-research kayo, mag-check uh, kayo. Uh, there could be more more answers uh, out of that. Yung, yung, uh, kasi sa Bible, pag nakahawa ka ng patay, uh, biblical naman talaga na nakahawa ka ng patay na uh, dapat maghugas ka nga ng uh, parang isa, dalawang, basta madaming beses pa nga. Uh, is it applicable pa ba nga yun yung sa uh, atin? Kasi noon ang panahon, ganun, uh, pag nakahawa ka ng patay, uh, dapat maghugas ka kasi parang na uh, na ano ang ng karumihan uh, which is biblical naman talaga pero uh, sa ngayon ba uh, same pa rin yun. so bali part siya ng uh, ceremonial law na actually hindi na rin na uh, applicable sa atin and uh, of course when talking about laws in the Old Testament dami, ma, madami probably a lot of Christians would say it's not uh, no longer applicable sa atin so, but, but this this one is really specific, na hindi siya applicable. But uh, the the hygiene or the medical concept, bali, is correct. Meaning, it only confirms what we we know now. Na yung mga patay palas, bacteria. Na because of that, actually, you can expose other people from other sickness. So yun yung parang ganun yung principle na magikita natin. But uh, in terms of uh, religious or ceremonial, is uh, is no longer uh, applicable to us. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Paul. Frank, si Sheng, ulang tanong. <laughs> okay. So, wala na ba? Si Hyundai Nems, Ma'am Nems? Hey. Uh, ano lang ako, uh, in connection with ceremonial laws and all that, you know, when you're preparing yourself, when you go to worship, for example, siguro uh, parang it's related to the fact that pagka pumapasok kasi sa simbahan or when you go to worship, you should prepare yourself, your spirit, na hindi ka rin unclean. There's no sin then. Like, ang, ang isang pinaka-importante doon, when you, when you go to church, na wala kang, wala kang grudge ba? Your, your heart is clean from all those kinds of feelings, especially when you're going to to meet your the brethren, yung family mo, yung, yung, yung church family mo. There's no grudge there. So no sin there. You kanina mention mo kasi yun eh, yung, yung um, being sinful or having sin in your heart uh, when you go to church. So parang siguro oh, only God knows that na you are going to church na unprepared na meron ka pang ano dyan sa, meron kang daladala dyan sa iyong puso. Tapos you're going to church. Then you are not ceremonially uh, prepared. You are not prepared ceremonially also. So parang there's this uncleanness pa sa iyong ano. So kung pwede, you go, go to church na ganun. Or you go to worship na prepared ceremonially although it's it's not really just a ceremony for us now it's really more of a service pero yung you have to be 
prepared pa rin. Yun lang. Yung uh, bali, for example, James would tell us that he, uh, sin hinders prayer. Kaya yung Panginoon di sumasagot ng ating mga prayers because of a sin that entangles us. So that's why sa atin, every time we approach the Lord in prayer, especially for our prayer meeting, tsaka yung pastoral prayer, we try to really commit ourselves na i-cleanse muna tayo. We ask forgiveness for sins because we know na, na ano yun, nakaka-hinder siya sa sagot ng Panginoon. So in a way, uh, that will also be in uh, the principle of our worship. Na ang worship natin nakakatanggap uh, katanggap-tanggap lamang sa Panginoon kung uh, we have a pure heart also and we have a clean spirit. Ah, kuya, may comment lang ba ako doon sa, sa yung mga babae na they are considered unclean kung may menstruation sila, no? Kasi may nabasa akong article na kahit hanggang ngayon, pero hindi sila Christian. Ibang kultura sila, lalong-lalo na sa India, na yung mga babae, pag nag sila, sila ay considered na unclean nga, kaya parang pinofor sila ng family nila na talagang umalis sa bahay nila at pumunta sa kagubatan, parang ganun, para doon mag-spend ng days para sila ay makatapos sa kanilang cycle, menstrual cycle. So ibang mga babae dahil diyan napapahamak na namamatay kasi syempre sa sa kagubatan may mga wild animals doon, di kaya sila ay na dehydrate, yun ba? Mag-isa lang sila, so sila ay syempre na expose sa danger kaya namatay sila. Yun ang sa mga mga tribes sa sa India yata yun na nabasa ko. Pero na na relate ko sa bib, sa biblical na ano na perspective na talagang yan pala ay nakasaad din sa Bible. Pero in a way that they do that sa mga babae doon sa India parang nakakalungkot din at nakakaawa ba ng iba na mamatay dahil diyan. Yan lang kuya. Thank you, Sister Nam. Meron pa. So uh, we continue to uh, attend sa ating Sunday School kasi ang Sunday School ni Kuya is book series. Maganda ito na ating uh, pinapag-aralan ang uh, Book of Luke. So next Sunday Kuya, Luke 9 na no? Kasi tapos na ang Luke 8. So hopefully we could uh, learn a lot from this book sa ating uh, Sunday School. So please invite kung may mga friends kayo to uh, join sa ating Sunday School kasi napaka-exciting ang mga stories sa Book of Luke. So kung wala naman ko yan, balik ko ang time sa'yo. Wala na siguro. Sige, we, we close in prayer na lang. Our Lord and gracious Father, we pray and thank you Lord for this time that we could uh, study your word. We pray Lord that you always give us insight, practical insight that we can always apply in our hearts and also in our family, in our work, in our community, and even, Lord, in our relationships here in our church at BICF. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, everyone, for joining Thank with you. us. Thank you. Wala namang mga news. Wala tayong news. Wala namang mga news so far. Increasing ba ang cases? Si Ocho Amelia ta ngayon. Mukhang abuti uh, natin na uh, abulin natin yung Indonesia or Malaysia. Salamat Isgeras family and Karyo family for joining.
Salamat Alice and Caspian for joining with us. See you again next Sunday or sa mga prayer Thank you din po. Ayun na na. Salamat. Thank you po. Bye-bye. 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 See you again. Bye-bye. 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 B